All right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna watch this interview with Nikita. I think I'm kind of curious. Maybe we see what's popping with this interview. Let's go for Taco video today. I have something very special. It's really long. Sure for you. I had a couple of hour conversation with Nikita. An hour and a half. All the stuff you guys have wanted to talk about. All the Does stuff. Does he have a list of questions? The development, what's coming on in the future, the cheating issues, the sound bugs, all that stuff. And I try to give everyone a, a voice. No matter, you know, if you were someone had never heard of before or a big content creator, I try to give everyone a voice to give as much, uh, you know, opportunity for them people to be heard. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. What we've seen in the past is we've had, um, every time that Escape for Tarkov is like going through highs and lows and all that, Battlestick Games kind of all of a sudden, like they'll, they'll start off with really great communication and, and you guys, like you will start off with really great communication. Then I think what happens is you end up getting really busy with work and you're so focused on making the game that people kind of forget or they, they feel like you guys forget about the community. And in the past we've had, you know, you guys would just send out like, hey, we're working on this right now and all that kind of stuff. I think, um, I guess one of the questions is, do you guys have more room to give more transparency moving forward on, um, you know, what you guys are working on, like monthly updates or even fortnight, like every two weeks to send out a Twitter post or an in-game message um, with information release. They should to, absolutely have uh, like, make it bi more at least bi-weekly like kind of updates um, or something. Because I feel like, one of the biggest uh they should I definitely there, like i don't think there's any reason the i mean maybe he has an answer for this there's but not enough communication coming out of battle state games uh of course we're not taking it like this because literally it's all about so everything single thing that we try to do and we plan to do it everything revolves around the community and what they want the quality of life things the additional like, i think for example we plan uh, to release starting to release the big tutorials about the game like if they've done really great for those who are still struggling for the newcomers and everything and uh, a lot of things we do and a lot of things while we do it we think about the community but i understand that sometimes it's not enough uh, transparency sometimes we just we don't have any like information about what's going on and yes yeah, seems like at some points we are sharing the plans we're sharing the roadmaps and everything but i believe we just can't make it stay in the plan of the like for example community management plan or something i don't know why i literally right after this interview will ask people like what's going on how we can how we can make it more transparent and give more information about uh, development process all i can say that we are not we, we're doing it not on purpose we are doing it like just cause literally, as you said, we got overwhelmed with work. And uh, sometimes I believe it's just not enough information for you guys. So, yeah, that's the point. Okay, I'm going to skip through some of this. Yeah, moving on. Roadmap. So, what does 2024 like look like? Kind of like? When's the wipes? This, this is a big question. I've got a lot of points for this, so. Uh, the wipe will be in summer, and the next one will be in the end of the, of the year. Like so, this is. year is more about the inner stuff. So, literally, we do a lot of stuff for the release. For example, uh, the storyline quest and all the functionality will be in release version. As I said before, it will not be released before the release. So that's why pretty big part of team working on the storyline quests, like the, the the biggest, the first, the first big one, which ways. will allow you to escape from Tarkov. And also we are making the prestige system and many, many stuff related for the vibe season kind of uh, thing. And uh, yeah, so big part of work is related to that. Also the graphics reward, graphics reward will be released earlier just to test it. Other than that, there's all the features and polishing but not as much as it was in the, in the last year, the year before. Uh, so mostly it's about polishing, I guess, fixing and edit up something. So that kind of sounds like to me, next wipe will have graphic update. And then the wipe after that, they want to do release. That's kind of what that sounded like. Yeah, I cannot like disclose uh, everything right now because literally I plan to do it on the Tarkov TV. Tarkov TV. Yeah, but something like that. So we are focusing on the release and there's a lot of stuff purely for the release only. So that's why you don't have you to, yeah, to yeah. So um, will we get another roadmap? Or could we get another roadmap for uh, for what yeah, this year looks yeah. like? Cool. Yeah, we'll definitely bring in the new roadmap for sure. So uh, Okay, I'm going to keep pushing you on everything. So um, okay. a lot of people are asking what the finished product would look this like. This is in 1.25 um, so uh, One of the big speed, questions yeah. is, will the maps be connected? And or will it be open world? Uh, yeah, they will be connected uh, for sure. Open world is not the thing for the release for sure. It's uh, too much. Yeah, so they will be connected because uh, literally the first uh, connection that we're like actually doing it for the for the last location for the terminal location. Yeah, and uh, it will be just to, just so everyone at home knows, there's a little bit of a delay. I'm in Australia, Nikita. Wait, so terminal will be connected to some other map, not everything else. I'm confused by that. Is he saying every map is going to be connected in some way, or just terminal? 
And how does how does that even work? So you can actually we're like actually doing it for the for the last location for the terminal location. Yeah. You said and... we're doing it for the last location per terminal. So that sounds like just the terminal. So you did touch on it before. There will be wipes when 1.0 comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, is it going to be like a seasonal, like there's the standard there will be, there will path of XO? Profile. There will be several profiles. There will be main account without wipes and the seasonal account with prestige system. So the prestige system is pretty big thing, actually. Pretty big. It will give you not only like the, the count of uh, number you like you escape. But if, you're, if you're saying like the maps are connected where like clearly there's like path to shoreline, path to lighthouse, right? Does that mean like if I want to play Shoreline, I have to go to Lighthouse first and then go to Shoreline <laughs> and vice versa? So if I'm on like Customs, I have to go from Customs to Reserve to Shoreline to Lighthouse. Like, I hope that's not what that means. Some track of you, you completed that the vibe. Suck, but right? also it will give you a lot of unique stuff. It didn't really and go into that's why the we're detail. Forcing it also for the release. So for the prestige system will be pretty big thing. Um, yeah, and uh, there will be wipes. There will be wipes, and uh, we will like. Yeah, the way for the us, way he uh, answered it didn't we, really answer. It, it all will be connected with the prestige system. How exactly it will be connected? We are still thinking about it, but I think you will need to escape from track of every single wipe. If you are escaping, completed the whole mission, the, the quest, and you like you got one of the several endings, by the way, mm. and uh, you will receive uh, like the point. You will receive the prestige point, and. You will receive a lot of bonuses, a lot of cool stuff that will keep with you uh, during wipes. So it's pretty interesting stuff. Unconscious state and the use of a defib in game. Still, oh, like no. at the state of R&D, like a lot of stuff, like animations, like additional kind of stuff, advanced animations. They were being done constantly, but I don't know when exactly we should actually implement it because it's a game changer and it will bring a lot of testing, a lot of bugs, and everything. Please so don't I think add that. <laughs> we'll add it someday, I guess. Please, we'll so please right now, do not we add are, that. Yeah, kind of forced to cut things out. Please really, don't. Because otherwise, cut it out. It'll it, it, go it, it, out for another year, another year, another year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cut so it that's out. Why we need to don't do it. Push it and just cut it out and uh, cut it out. Move forward. So some features will be cut it out <laughs> later for the dlc some features will be totally cancelled so yeah. so it's, it's it's for three buds, bro. So bad, thanks for Again, months. Like we have all the animations we have all of the designs everything lock picking it's not that fine. priority to add that but again uh it will be pretty we're easy to implement right. if we want to implement because there will be new boss and i think this boss will block it block picking is fine but you kind of just buy keys on the market anyway so like do you really need a lock pick like with the way keys work, I don't see it really being a big deal. Um, I really want it to come with the functionality of booby traps and uh, mine fields and placing mines and everything. So that's why like it, it draws additional like area of work related for the mines and the oh. mine diffusing. Yeah, I was say, are we meant to diffuse the mines and that. Please don't, please don't add mine. Oh my God, no. <laughs> Did he just say booby traps and mines and placing mines? Oh, yeah, man. PMC Karma. Right now, oh, I can't uh, man, think about bad. that. It will be added. Uh, not straightforward. It will be some concealed uh, characteristic of your, of your player. You will not know at, at the first time how exactly you should lower it or make it higher. Of course, the data miners will data mine the shit of the game <laughs> and they will know how to do it. So oh, there's a lot of stress about PMC Karma. Is, is it going to be in a way that it will only affect you in a minor way? Or is it going to be like, if you don't play the game how you're meant to Hello. with the PMC Karma side of things, it's going to stop you from progressing. So what I mean by that is, is it going to be in a way that you might just not be able to buy a couple of things? Or maybe if you're a bad man, you'll get like access to certain type of clothing. Whereas like if you're a good person, you'll get like, I don't know, the, the really nice clothing or something. Is it going to be down that path? Or is it going to be like actually game stopping? So right now, it's the first thing that we want to implement related to the um, karma is that we'll add new boss and uh, he will be a bounty hunter and we'll actually hunt, hunt players with the bad karma. And that's it for now. Okay. So uh, he, will, he will hunt you down if you have a low karma. Like, for example, uh, if you will sit in the bushes <laughs> too long at the extraction, it will count the negative karma. And we will have different things like that to... So, if you sit in bushes too long at the extract, it'll give you negative karma. What? Wait, so how would that even how would that even work? Uh, wait, so it does it count how long you're inactive in raid, like how long you're in a raid without shooting anything or like looting something? And based on like you have this period of inactivity, it lowers your PMC karma? That's 
uh, is that like I don't see how else that would work or if it's like you're in proximity to the extract for too long it lowers your camera he said if you sit in a bush at the extract it'll lower your karma <laughs> what but he also said the only thing at least initially that low karma would just make there's a boss that'll come and hunt you but is what is he on every map then there's a boss on the map this is this has a lot of questions now. So there's a, is there a boss on every map, and if you have low karma, he just comes and, and kills you. Fully. Um, that's all I've got for the roadmap side of things. I want to move on to uh, the Unity update. Um, what will it bring, uh, and when are we going to expect it? This year for sure. We're still. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, like as much as, as much as I want to say, f people sitting in the extract in a bush. Like, I also don't think the game should force you like <sighs> the game shouldn't punish you for playing a certain way it should reward you for playing a certain way you shouldn't you shouldn't incentivize behavior through punishment in a game you should incentivize it through re reward you should say if you do this type of thing we'll reward you for it not if you do this we're gonna punish you i think it's a little backwards shifting it because we don't have time for big, like, big chunks of work and big amount of testing related to that so we still plan for this year I don't know the exact date, but it's planned for this year for sure. I'm not a game developer and I've never, the most I've ever coded is, is a game called Tic-Tac-Toe. What exactly does a Unity update bring? Like different uh, new tools, so inside tools for like for actual game development, like corrected pipelines, senior pipelines, of like graphic pipelines and everything, which will allow us. I want extract campers to be rewarded. No, I want the game to reward you more for like taking risk and moving around the map instead of just sitting in a bush where you spawned in. So like they're you balance the risk and reward of that, right? Like if you move around, there's like stuff you can do, like you can get the better loot spots. There's like mechanics to engage with, to move that like where you move around the map and you have to complete them instead of just, hey, sit there and wait for some guy to loot the whole map and then kill him. Like, sure, you can do that, but the guy that's taking the risk and doing everything else should be rewarded for that, yeah. That's a great uh, still frame to pause on, by the way. <laughs> so had more stuff and change more stuff related to graphics. Uh, I believe there is something yeah, related to the new networking and uh, overall, like a lot of bug fixes, a lot of optimizations within the engine. So it definitely will bring some optimizations for that. And uh, generally speaking, it's just a new like software and with the, with the fixes and a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. Because literally, because we are uh, making the most ex expensive and complicated game in terms of the actual production for the unity it's always a struggle for us to keep all of the all of the scenes together loaded to work with it in, in the in the engine and the new version like eventually uh, and logically they fix stuff they optimize stuff within the engine within the editor and it will run faster and it allow us to build faster work faster and generally speaking it's just like an updated tool for that in general like i said I, i'm not in development and i don't understand a lot about it but i have an idea i guess if it brings a lot of optimization like there's there is people out there at the moment that still can't play streets for example yeah why and, and i'm not trying to be rude but even me right now my frames are terrible on streets after this last update why isn't getting to the latest version of unity like the th thing that you should try and get done first no it will not it will not give like the huge impact it will not give, give us like the huge performance boost for the streets because streets still getting optimized with our own hands with our own tool that we built and uh, it's just about it so it's just a really complicated really big location that needs to be additionally optimized like manually and uh, the new version of unity will not give some like the big amount of optimization for that like i think it will be some okay so it seems like unity update is just going to help with bug fixes and not have anything to do with performance which is kind of sucks I mean, like noticeable, but not too much. Because literally we still need to do a lot of stuff by ourselves to optimize it. I'm probably not the best person to be asking the questions, but it's probably also a good reason why I'm asking the questions because I don't know. Like I don't understand how easy it is to just change to the next engine. Um, so it's that's not easy. I, yeah, I wouldn't deem it be easy, but I at least need to ask about it. So I'll move on to the next topic because I have a lot of things to talk about. So I'm just, we can't talk about stuff forever. Microtransactions. So I'll start with this question and we'll move on from there. But what can we expect to see with microtransactions? More clothing. More clothing for sure. We will add to some new stuff in April. Some uh, like uh, stuff like, in not April. Not like 100% unique, but something new for that. And uh, that's it. For not 100% unique, but new. I don't know how to take that. No. So we are not planning adding anything. Also, Clothing's we will fun, add Dad. More clothing, and we will keep it for that moment. So we will not add anything like, as I said before, many, many times, like boosters, equipment packages, currency packages, and so on. We will not add it. So it will be only about closing and what we have 
in the game right now. So it's a stash expansion and uh, like cooperative mode. Yeah. As long as long as the clothing doesn't have some type of advantage, because you could end up with you know where like people in COD they use the like fully murdered out black skin, and they so they can like sit in the dark corner and no one can see them. As long as it's not like ghillie suits and something like that, or like scat, you can wear scav clothing and look like a scav, and then people, you know, as long as it's not stuff like that, I'm fine with it. There is a question about oh, a few people asking because they missed out on buying Edge of Darkness. Will, will you Edge of Darkness ever return, or will it be sold in bits? So, for example, would they be able to buy the gamma container at any point? There will be a new version of the game pretty soon. Okay, and they'll be able to get the gamma container there. Yeah, there will be gamma container there, and also like other pretty cool stuff. Is it going to be better than Edge of Darkness? Yes. <laughs> now, this wait, what? Wait, you're making a new. Hold on, wait. What do you mean? You're adding a new, new version of the game soon. You'll be able to get gamma container, also, like other pretty cool stuff, and other be stuff. Than Darkness? Yes. <laughs> other stuff that's better than EOD. So what about my bozo ass that bought EOD seven years ago? What do I get? I don't get the new stuff. I just. I have to pay money to upgrade it, probably? You have to pay the difference? Wait, wait, what, what's the pay to upgrade, though? I already paid a hundred and, what, forty-something dollars, right? For EOD? And I gotta pay more? Now, this one is a bit to this question, so just hear me. I don't... I don't like that. Yeah. A lot, I don't like that. A lot of us, by us, I mean creators, by multiple accounts. Is it possible that you could make it that you could have more than one character on the same account and you could even sell those extra character slots on the one account? So then I could have my main USEC PMC, but then I want to play a hardcore playthrough and I could buy that, mm -hmm. say for $10. I could have another character mm -hmm. and I have, I have to pay $40 to buy a whole new account. I could have it all on the one account. Is that something that you'd be open to in the future? Or, or no. maybe just add a goodwill, <laughs> give us a second character, and then we could buy the third and fourth? There will, de there will definitely be something about that for sure, because uh, mm -hmm. I know that it's way too easier to have all the characters in one account, not switching it off and everything. And it, it, it can be done pretty easily. So yeah, most likely there will be additional characters. Like for example, Edge of Darkness Edition will receive one character for free. I don't know, like mm -hmm. something like that. There we but, go. Hey, it's, it's not that we are doing right now, but uh, we are planning to, for sure. All right, this is the topic that everyone dreams, and you know what's going to be. We need to talk about cheaters. There's a few things mm -hmm. that um, were very common with the, the people's comments and questions. So uh, I'll start at the top, and we'll just go from there. So a lot of uh, questions about client-side authentication and server-side authentication, and apparently, like, and by the way, I have no clue about how cheats work, but apparently because a lot of the actual loot is client-side, people can make cheats that can get loot really easily or know where the places are of loot really easily it's not that easy it's not that easy we don't have a loot on the client side everything on the server side but we have like a lot of checks it's not that easy but is it that easy <laughs> it seems like it's that easy so optimize the networking and stuff and they find it <laughs> and like imperfections in code and also some like uh how to say it abuses of the code the native code of unity and everything I, so i don't i don't know shit about this stuff so i this is another language to me i'm just trolling easy it's not like we have like half of the game on the, on the client side it's also like it, every single time when, when we close something for the cheaters they find another way and we close it and they find another way and some going process and eventually it will be too hard for them because we are planning to have more stuff for the cheater or anti-cheats uh like we have our inside solution that's already working like for a long time the detection system and also the anti-cheat system where they're working together so we'll add some more stuff to that pretty soon i think we'll be testing it on arena at first and then we'll add it to eft it's not that easy it's not that easy people don't understand how it works people don't understand how exactly code works and how actually cheat works so yeah it's, it's, it's not that easy Are you it's definitely not easy i'm a little skeptical that like you make this new system to detect them and then they find a bypass around it or something like I feel like that just is always what happens. Like they're always ahead of you. The people making the cheats are always ahead of you and the devs are playing catch up to like patch these these like bypasses that they've come up with. Open to more invasive anti-cheat. Uh, we're thinking yeah. about it and uh, literally the only thing that bothers me a lot, it will, be, it will draw a lot of FPS, a lot of FPS. And you'll like, people will start struggling playing on other locations. And of course somebody will say like, oh, it's okay, but I play without cheaters, but I, I, I cannot ruin player base with that pretty far decision just to to install invasive anti cheat but still there is some kind of not like invasive. Wait, i want to listen to that again the the, literally the only thing that bothers me a lot it will be it will draw a lot of fps a lot of fps and you'll the like people will start struggling playing on other locations and of course somebody will say like oh, it's okay but i play without cheaters but i i, I cannot ruin player base 
with that pretty far decision just to to install invasive anti-cheat but still there is some kind of not like so invasive, invasive anti-cheat would tank your performance in the game we don't care about fps if it means no cheaters i mean fps i like <laughs> dude performance is already rough in this game like <sighs> if that's really what would happen i don't I don't know. FPS drop in a game that's already hard to run all man. That would that would suck. That would suck, but it would also be really not, I don't know. I feel like do you think you guys would play would you if if <laughs> if customs ran like streets but they had invasive anti cheat and there were like basically no cheaters in the game. Would you rather that? Most of you guys are saying no, I feel like Honestly, I think I would do the trade-off. I would do it. If it, if the anti-cheat actually worked and it was like I don't know, there were it was basically no cheaters. Like if you would just never saw a cheater in the game, I would take the frame rate hit. I would do it. I think that would be worth. Especially, I mean, <laughs> I would do it. Invasive techniques, but Everyone some technical no is stuff that hack along. can be done can be switched on and uh, it will allow like we do not allow cheats to run actually and uh, we will see how it will go yeah but uh like the invasive anti cheat like it's it's like it's it's, it's not like it's a no-go for us but right now due, due to our architecture due to unity and overall complexity of the game it will ruin the performance a lot yeah i, I need to just emphasize because and, and i'm just gonna stray away from the questions for a moment if there's one thing that makes people quit this game more than anything is when they feel like they've died so cheated. I, I, no if i was if i was to say there was one thing they'll go i'm not playing this game anymore is if they've had multiple instances in a day where they've just gone you know what i think these guys were cheating this game i'm out and and I, as much as like it might take an fps hit i guess with, with every year that passes we get better computers and all that so hopefully people can eventually get to the see point i got a computer good that's enough. where but i was gonna I go if there was one say thing that like people away from this game hardware it, 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 hardware improves over time and like i mean the minimum hey my game closed the minimum requirements to like play the game effectively might get boosted up but i think honestly dude the, like the cheating problem it really hurts the game it it really really does i think more than anything and just like the stigma around it as well like it's almost become notorious for like people be cheating in tarkov like you play tarkov you're gonna die to cheaters like i just think it has that stigma and i i don't know it would suck it would i mean i guess it really depends how big a performance hit would be but you have to remember to if you played this game a long time ago like early on in the game the performance sucked in this game it was it was like to the point where people didn't use scopes in the game because you had no frames with them but like we still played it it was still fun the performance was butt cheeks but i don't know i i think i feel like i would trade it i would go back to bad performance for that is cheaters and so i've got a lot of points and questions to bring up on this cheating topic but i just needed to emphasize that right here because yeah they you can't even open up reddit without at least five out of the first 10 posts being about cheaters and what do you think of these stats mobile phone authentication we have this authentication for the three uh, specific uh regions and uh it, it doesn't work because literally all the cheaters yeah. mostly use like the virtual sim cards and everything yeah, so i was just gonna say pretty, that like easy for them to change uh, their numbers and everything the phone so, uh, phone authentication doesn't do anything unless you could like validate that their sim card was from like and which would screw some people out of this but if you could validate that your sim card was from like a major cell provider and it wasn't just some like hey i downloaded some bs sim card that's like not actually real uh, yeah, yeah, people like, again, will get around it's not that. that easy. It, 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 literally, we will would implement it a long time ago. But yeah, like there is like options. There is options uh, for for like to have additional authentication, um, and uh, something will be done for the release for sure. Like we need to add something for that, and um, maybe even to start forcing players to make some changes in the system if you want to play like in the cheater free environment. You need to make some changes with your PC. But again, it will. It will hit the player base literally. Not everyone understands how. We need two factor DNA authentication. You have to cotton swab the inside of your cheek and put it into a machine to verify your identity before you play the game. Forget about mobile phone. Exactly. He, he should go there. He should go to the BIOS and change some <laughs> things in, in, in BIOS, for example. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not that easy. Yeah. Like to, to, to make some kind of changes on the go. And uh, it's, it needs to be. 
it's not a simple we solution. To, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. We need to look into it. We need to, to to gather the statistics and everything. So this is another question that uh, comes up. A few people are asking: Is it possible for you to sue the cheat developers? Um, apparently, Halo did it and uh, was successful. So can you go out and find them and sue them? Is that possible? It's yeah. possible, but it's good not luck. like the, the speedy <laughs> good, process. Good usually luck. Usually takes up to one year or half of the year or even. Suing is expensive and lengthy, and you have to find them first. Uh, there's no way. There's Hired no to, way <laughs> to get them into a legal perspective, and uh, we are working in that direction. But it's it's not easy to do again because literally it takes a lot of time if it comes to the, the, the legal processes yeah, and everything. I, I Is there don't... any plan to implement? As to... nice as that would be, like that's not. I don't think that's realistic. It's it's not. I mean, you, <laughs> didn't Epic Games sued some like kid for cheating in Fortnite though? <laughs> Maybe they should just start suing the, the cheaters themselves. Bill Cam from Arena into they the sued some game, like fourteen year old or, kids' or parents or something. Because I think that also would help people understand that they didn't die to cheaters; they died to being outskilled, or well, they did die to a cheater and they weren't outskilled. Um, so either post raid Bill Cam uh, when the servers finished, like everyone's out of the raid, can they go back and watch it? I think that would help also people being more accurate with reporting of cheaters. Uh, it, it can be done, but it will. We will need a lot of time to make it right, a lot of time to make it workable, like to, to store this replay somewhere with that amount of uh, like the rating sessions that we are having right now. Uh, it will be like, too, too hard for us. If we will try to, to make it, like start to make it right now, we will spend like several months or even more time for that. And we cannot allow it to, to happen because literally we have more important stuff to do. And uh, so, we will think about it. We will no. think about something that will so give no, no clarification, kill additional clarification how, how, you, how you died actually. We'll think about it. Okay. And the last one I have is, and I know you've said no in the past, Sorry, but I'm going to ask again. Compensation. So when you get a successful report, did someone just get like, I don't know, 100,000 rubles? It's not that much, but it makes them feel like they got something for it. Or are you worried about people mass reporting every single death in case they get some money yeah, back? Yeah, people will start mass reporting, right? And another thing that we should know, like if if that, that particular guy uh, were reported by several people, yeah. we need to find how to share it between people. No, and, you just and, give and them all. Come. Give them all the same amount. Money, okay, I don't know how much you play Escape from Tarkov, but people blow through money very quickly. So even if you were to give out 100,000 rubles to every person that died to a cheater. They should absolutely do that. You should you should at least just get rubles back. If you report, if you died to someone and reported them and they got banned for cheating, you should get some type of thing back from that. I don't see any issue with that. I mean, maybe you would have people just reporting everyone at that point like he said I bet my life where it's like all of shames bozo as fbi friend can find that cheat developer and sue them get better nikita real uh, maybe you'd have people just reporting everyone <laughs> at that point and then the reports wouldn't really mean anything but i still feel like if you reported someone and they got banned for cheating you should get something back from that although i guess now if you reported someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that you died to them, to be fair. But still, if you died to someone and they got banned for cheating, you should get something back. Maybe even, okay, hear me out. This could be a little bit crazy. But it just make every people feel better. Died to that cheater that got banned gets a little bit of rubles. It doesn't even have to be the person that reports them. It's just someone who dies to a cheater. When they get banned, they go, hey, you died to a cheater. Here is some compensation. And then people would actually feel well, like I'd they actually got rich. something for, for it or something. Okay. I, I'd, I'd be so rich. You're the brains. I'm just handing out the cigarettes. I'm the instigator. But yeah, if, if, I think I, people just want to feel like they're not being as punished as bad from dying to cheat. I'd have a roll of decks. Like they can report people that... They know we're cheating, but they see some motherfuckers will go into a raid, fly around someone, be like, ha 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 ha, you can't report me, and then they'll fuck off. You know, like that that shit happens, you know. And if you double tap for people that don't know this, you tap, double tap Y and you go report VoIP, it actually shows their name, I'm pretty sure. Or it says reported there, it reports them or something. So um there is a way to actually still report those people, but it's still it's frustrating when people can see a cheater on a flea market or, or tanking their KD and they can't report them. Um and I'm mm -hmm. and I'm sorry I'm emphasizing this cheating topic so much, but it, it's there was out of all the comments, there was pretty much two things that were stand out, which was the communication and the and the cheating. So I'm just trying to really nail down the point that people want to get heard, that um, they're frustrated and uh, and they want more ways to be able to help eliminate as many cheaters as possible. And also, um, you know, if they can get compensation, that'd be great, but at least mm -hmm. help just f them off so then they don't quit the game. So then the play base stays strong and less toxic. All right, that's all the questions I have for cheating. Let's go back to the more. Don't ban the cheaters, troll them, give them infinite loading glitch bugs, give them, the, give them all these matchmaking bugs that we just had, just give them that every single raid basically and, and troll them out of playing the game.
please. Well, fun stuff. <laughs> there is a lot of people that are really excited about the achievement just, system. Myself just included. troll the, them until they the rage quit, dude. The killer achievement. Mm -hmm. Could this actual achievement be changed to, once you have the achievement, you can buy it from that point onwards? Because killing killer 100 times is actually very difficult. And if someone goes to the effort of farming 100 killers, they want to be able to buy it without having to farm them 50 times again each time. Mm -hmm. Um, so would that be an actual option in the future? Instead of, you know, in the, when you yeah, go to like, Sam, thank you very Ragman, much for the 10 bros. Instead like of having the quest, no could it be have the achievement of killing killer 50 times or a hundred times. Mm -hmm. And then that way they could buy it at the start of a one and be like, Hey, I'm one of those people that have, you know, killed killer a hundred times. I don't need to, I, I get my, uh, my tracksuit or whatever. You mean like it, it will be persistent through wipes? Correct. Okay. Uh, and, it's, and. I, I'm an achievement fiend. Okay, back from my World of Warcraft days. I think days, that's I like fine. I, just, I don't really Kappa care achievement. That. There is no achievement for a Kappa. I, I feel like that should be the base achievement. Like there should always be the Kappa achievement in there. Because a lot of people, that's their end goal. Hey, I got through the Kappa container. And that's a very big achievement for a lot of people. People like me who have no life, playing Escape from Tarkov all, all day, you know, I can get it in a week. Whereas a lot of people sometimes never get it. And when they finally do get it, it's just nice for them to have that achievement for getting the Kappa container. And then this is going back to my World of Warcraft stuff. But in World of Warcraft, there's feats of strength. So what that means is uh, it's an achievement that's specific to an event. So for example, you got the Kappa in patch 0.14.1 wipe. You get like an achievement for that wipe Kappa. And that could also unlock stuff like a certain armband or something to say. And this could work for some of like your Halloween events and all the other events you got going on. Having those feats of strength out there. You could do a cool event. You get an achievement for it, but it's not like stopping people from getting 100%. Okay, that's a good idea. Giving like small unlockable cosmetics for doing events and stuff like that that stick on your account. Count. It's a good idea. And achievements. It's just kind of saying that hey, you did something cool in the game. Uh, would you be able to? Would you be open to doing doing those in the future? It's possible. I can talk about achievements. I'll, say, but I'll leave that one there. Matchmaking. This is probably an, uh, one of the things that was talked about a fair bit. Do you have more things in place to help improve the time to load into raid or streamline the please. process? Uh, <laughs> please. Yes, because uh, again, like the matchmaking uh, in arena, it differs, and we test uh, new stuff for matchmaker in arena first. And uh, of course, uh, if uh, we'll have something that will boost it up. I believe we already have it, but we need to test it on Arena, so we will implement an EFT tool. Um, yeah, it's also going. My loading times right now are like minimum five minutes to get into a raid. I would love to see it faster. Quality of life stuff. So I've got a, I've got a few on this list. The when you're loading into a raid, can we? I know you can't make it so you can change stuff within your stash, but would you be able to make it so we can at least view our stats, our teammates' stats, uh, potentially start crafts or or have something, um, a game of mm -hmm. pong that, against with your teammates or or Tetris? I don't know, just something that when you're loading into a raid that you've got something going on, so it's not just a matchmaking. Well, play pong. We are, like, we're thinking about it again for the release. Put it's in something. put in like mini games. Times, play so pong much, against your boy. And uh, yeah, yeah, M most likely we will add uh, some features for that. Dash container locking. It's also planned, like it's actually even done in some branch in the, of the development and it's done but not tested. And uh, yeah, like it, it's planned for a long time ago. I don't know why it, it still it doesn't have it in the game, <clears throat> but yeah, it will be in the game one time or another. Would it be possible for us to understand the weather better? And what I mean by that is the forecast sometimes says it's like cloudy and you get in there and it's like pissing down with rain or it's foggy. Um, just so uh -huh. people, I think the grievance here and the comments here were based around, you would load in with a sniper off or planning to do a sniping mission. And then it's a lot of fog that. and You get into rain. a raid and it's yeah. really foggy. That and happened like to me yesterday. Fog. You know, I'm trying to get my shooter born in heaven done. I brought the AXMC into raid and we get in and it's just fog. And I was like, well, that was a good time to bring this gun. With my taco shooter quest done and i've wasted my time loading into a raid getting in there and going hey i can't even do the quest i wanted to do um mm -hmm. people would like to request better understanding of what's going on with the weather okay um and then either a way to save or or something the weapon when you make a gun being able to make sure it starts on fully automatic with lasers on or laser setups in a certain way um you know go in the hideout and be able to toggle everything you want and then that's how it stays in raid. That's how it should work. And you should be able to right click on lasers and toggle the mode through that without hitting your key for it. Because your key toggles everything. So if you have two lasers, you can't toggle them individually. You should be able to go and manually click it. When you go into the into the firing range and you change how your gun like looks and, and all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Like how your presets are on your gun. For example, you know, you want this laser on or whatever uh, and, and set to full auto or, or the holographic. Say, for example, using a Cobra sight, um, a way to save mm -hmm. it so that way when you go into a raid, you don't have to change it every time you go into a raid to have it how exactly mm -hmm. how you want. A lot of questions about the armor system do that and, the new, and the new hitboxes and all that. Do you want to elaborate on what your thoughts are currently with um, how you see it and how, is this the final iteration? How you? No, it's not the final iteration. We're changing it. We will change it for the arena first. So we will change the hitboxes to make it at least more predictable. 
in fights, or, and it's not it's not uh, it's not the uh, final Please condition. Change of, that. Yeah, because a, a lot of people are feeling Please. like it's, it's I guess RNG. You're shooting at someone and it not is. knowing if it's going to be a kill shot or if it's like you're hitting them in the plates and all that. This is probably one of the grievances I have. It is. It's full RNG right now. <laughs> sometimes you shoot people and they instant die, and sometimes you shoot them and they take forty bullets. Um, but it came up as well was fragmentation. It's a complete. It will be removed. It will be removed. I think fragmentation's out okay, of the I game. Here is, I wish it was removed. I, I think it's <laughs> out. Good. Um, I don't, move on. I don't think bullets uh, fragment Modifications anymore. like so four groups and stuff. At the moment, it gives a base percentage. Is it possible? Are you going to change it so instead it goes a percentage to? horizontal recoil and vertical recoil or is it going to be a flat percentage base moving forward we plan to separate it now um particularly in arena i know this annoys a lot good. of people they i've got big that. improvements this what with recoil but the following is still annoying in both main game and arena and don't add to immersion just frustration and that's um head recoil and blurry vision when you're getting shot it's like your your head's like going like oh sorry when you're shooting your head's going like this while you're shooting but like guns in your shoulder it's not moving your head like your head's you, you shoot like lots as well um the, the head recoil when shooting is is annoying and also blurry vision so when you're shooting and you're getting shot at it makes it you people go oh i hit him in the head when they really they didn't but they couldn't tell because it was blurry and also aim punch is always i don't really mind the head the camera movement when shooting but the blurry vision when you're getting shot at kind of sucks being a topic that everyone hates it feels like there's always way too much aim punch can we get reduction in both of the, in all three of these really head recoil blurry vision and aim punch i think that would make people feel a lot more like i don't want to use the word competitive shooter but at least re like somewhat realistic you yeah, need to think about it because literally it's still low already but if you will remove it totally it will look not okay so if you will remove the totally like the, the hand recoil it will be a little bad i don't like how it looks i don't, I don't mind only guns i don't mind the camera recoil yeah, that's it it's not cool but we'll think about it what about inertia um it still feels very boaty at level one i know last about a year ago um i think trey and veritas put a put a lot of effort into explaining how the game was getting to the point where it felt way too boaty and all that could we get a slight reduction in the inertia particularly at the lower levels so that way people don't reduction i honestly my stance on this is um the your inertia should just be your inertia and it shouldn't scale with how heavy you are there should just be a base level of inertia and you're that's how much you always have when you get heavier it doesn't change you maybe just move slower if you get heavier you don't just start sliding around because you you put on like 10 extra kilos get seasickness we need to check we need to check i'll take it all right maybe um, something to do that. this is top three on people's uh people's comments which was sound um occlusion zones are still a massive issue particularly staircases and i, I just need to emphasize that do you have an eta on the audio pop um, being fixed um oh, it's where when people get within a certain distance of you they say they're like 100 meters away and they get within sound distance of you there's like a very loud audible like crack or a pop um and you just know that there's someone nearby without even like it's like without even meaning to know that they're there and the easy fast fix of this is actually just disabling across the game um binaural audio yeah it's, it's a binaural bug or something but yeah this is a lot of people would argue this is game breaking and it's very much um it's it breaking the immersion of the game <laughs> so when they hear that they're like oh play nearby well i guess i'm gonna have to shoot this guy <laughs> like like you literally watch a streamer uh -huh. that when they hear it they're like oh there's someone here like audio it's, pop it's not even like funny anymore it, it really needs to be fixed like it's it's to the point where it's i don't know how to word it but let's say it, it, it's it's, it's annoying a lot of people uh how close to the final iteration of oculus audio are we i don't know actually because I, I i don't believe that everything is going with the oculus right now i need to check it i need to check it if you like uh, gave us a question before the interview i will like get the info because right now i i don't remember actually what exactly is being done in terms of oculus audio uh, so I need, I need, it needs to be checked. Yeah, and, and I should actually bring that. He's like, shit, I hired that guy to do that five months ago. I need to see what he's doing. And, uh, a lot of people, not a lot. There was some, some comments being like, Castilli is only allowed to ask certain questions. Um, and they vet his questions before he gets into the interview. And he's not allowed to ask um, about certain things. Nikita and I haven't spoken in like a while. <laughs> I've just been like, hey, you want to have a chat? And he's like, uh, okay. So, um... <laughs> We, we don't vet the questions or anything. I ask him whatever I want and he tells me to fuck off or not. That's on him. So what a headset. Why did you change headsets to have different hearing ranges? Why? Yeah. Because they're different. We need to change it somehow to make it more Obviously differentiate different. one from the other. I, yeah. I feel like it's brought a lot of issues. Like, in all seriousness, it's brought a lot of issues across the game. So it for has. example, contact fours, you can hear 140 meters away, someone running at you. And, and then like, you know, other contacts that just, that you can barely hear anything and it just makes everything loud and annoying. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, there's, I think ever since you changed the, the ranges on the headsets, I think a lot of issues started to, to Facts. Like, I don't have the best word, sorry. A lot of people have had. They should have the same, you should have the same hearing range, no matter what skills 
Apple's headphones. I think the different headsets cutting down on ambient sound is maybe okay. Maybe like some of them reduce ambient, bo like if they already do, but keeping that is probably fine, but I don't think the hearing range should be different, including with the perception skill. Shouldn't be in the game. I feel like there should just be like a base level of hearing and everyone is on the same page with that. Had issues with the fact that headsets have caused the game to become more... A lot of people are under the assumption the games became more ratty after the fact that headsets had their ranges increased and changed. Because people can sit still and be like, there's someone coming from 140 meters away and they d there's no way they'll like avoid that now. It's, it's actually, it's not about the, the distances of hearing. It's about the, the, the compression effect, audio compression effect, which brings up the, uh, mm, the quiet sounds more and it feels like i'm pretty sure you definitely hear further with some of them right <clears throat> don't you like almost definitely hear further with contact fours and other ones you you hear he hear sounds from a bigger Hi. distance but it's more I, about the compression. i think i think he's not we can, right we can balance that. it uh, i think i've definitely i've definitely tested it and i can hear people from further away with certain headphones yeah, and that. yeah. like I've, I've used the in-game range finder and we and we took in all the head headsets and that so at least have a look at it if you could because it's it's a, a thing of contention between people and the Three. crouch walk no audio bug that one's driving people insane I, it, it's still there like i thought it, it was fixed a long time ago okay i will not you know wait you didn't even know they didn't know that crouch walking is silent? Somebody's gotta know, bro. Someone's gotta, no, they knew. They knew, that's cap, they knew. <laughs> they knew. I, I don't, I don't think that crouch walking should be silent. One, I think standing and walking should be the quietest movement, or at least the same as crouch walking. It doesn't make sense that you're squatting down, Slavic squatting on the ground, creeping around and you can actually move like that you should be just like walking should be the quietest version of it or at least the same um but yeah i don't think you should be totally quiet you should make some noise it should be very very quiet but you should make some noise probably i think um, and I think could we adjust some of the volumes, not us personally, could BSG adjust some of the volumes of certain actions, like aiming down a sight. I know there's an audio for it, but like you've shot a lot in real it's life. Really if loud. you want to, it, sh it should be fairly quiet, if not silent. Like I know you've the reason yeah. why you've got it in there, but it's like, it's you can hear someone at the end of a hallway aiming down their sight. And it's really annoying when you're like, you've got the jump on someone, but you can't aim down your sight because you have to make an audio cue to do that. So aiming down sight should be a shitload quieter. And, uh, okay. And sometimes looting is extremely loud as well. Um, it should be quieter, but it, sh it should still make some noise. I think there should be some volume to it, but it is way too loud. The bosses. So first one is packet loss exploit. Do you know about this? Oh uh, yes, yes I know. It will be fixed. Yeah, this this is actually ruining the game, and and the reason for that is there's people that are on killing boss quests, and when they are, they see the packet loss and like I'm getting out. And so what happens Agreed. is you have all these raids starting where people just run straight to the extract, and there's no one even like in the raid because what happens is like they just don't want to be in there because they can't kill their boss for their quest or their achievement or whatever they're doing, and it, it's been around for about two three wipes, and it it's, it's it really needs to be fixed. Yeah, like, it's agree. killing the game. That's a, that's a bad. Yeah, yeah. A bad in, the, in, the, in the next patch, I guess. And I know that um, you and I had heated discussions about the boss. That the way, at least, at least, like, interchange, if you want to farm Killa, like, you have to go through and play the raid and find him. Like, you can't just be like, oh, he's not here. All right, I'm leaving. And then you're running around in the mall and no one's there because everyone saw that Killa wasn't there. Um, particularly early wipe. <laughs> um, it caused a very large bottleneck, this wipe. Um, having the boss spawn rates that low at the very start of a wipe. I know you've got different opinions on this and I'm not trying to tell you how to, to make your game, but it needs to be much higher earlier on because it, what happens is everyone does all the other quests, then all of a sudden everyone is now on the boss killing quest. And then if you either on your first quest where I need to kill Rishala and get a golden TT, and then there's someone else farming Rishala for 15 kills, and then someone else is trying to do their snowball quest, all of a sudden you have like 40 people, not the exaggeration. I don't even, I, I think the boss spawn should just be higher. Like, I don't even care about the quests. I just think, like, the bosses could spawn. They don't even really drop anything good anymore. Like, just spawn the boss. <laughs> just just spawn the bosses. It's not like, the game's not like how it used to be where you could just put Altons on the flea market and run around like a tank in the beginning of the wipe because you killed Rashala and Killa and got a an armor and a helmet. Like, I think they could be way higher from the start. It's also fun fighting bosses at the beginning of wipe when there's a lot of people and you all have crap gear and then you can kill the bosses and get some better guns and stuff. I'm fine with it.
you have like five people in a raid trying to kill the boss but even if the boss spawn rate is like 20 or 30 percent with five people running at it even if you're the first person there like you're, you still got a one in five chance to be the first person to kill the boss and it can become very frustrating for people i don't know what the bosses. percent so should be but the they could that like you could see bosses more like, in the beginning of the wipe for sure frustration for players all right moving on to you never see them player anymore scars. player scars spawn in way too early particularly on the map streets and lighthouse uh, and hey, i literally saw someone tweeting so not, on reddit saying um, someone's the upgraded their computer so they could play streets quiet. and then they were like I, I you, played about three months ago, time, bro. And uh, it was amazing. And then people were like, welcome welcome to our map. Like, Streets is more scav players than there are Facts. Like, PMCs most of the time. Because this yeah. overwhelmed the map. <clears throat> so, can, we, can can there just be, a, like, a base? Like, make it so the first 15 minutes there's no player scavs? Or just very small amount? Because even Lighthouse, you're trying to kill the water treatment plant. Like, you spawn into Lighthouse, you finally and get a the water treatment plant. After there's already scavs there. You start clearing the water treatment plant. And then, all of a sudden, you've got five player scavs, like, charging up on you. And they yeah. can run straight up to the rogues, tap the rogue in the back of the head, take the rogue's gun run over to you and they've got a, a pretty decent loadout and it gets very very frustrating when you're trying to do a quest on lighthouse and then you've got like five player scavs ruining your day so the uh the, the player scavs on those maps are, are, are really painful is is there any plans in in to adjust how you can play ground zero level 20 plus now but the map's not that good the fog works in escape from tarkov because i feel like sometimes you're in a map and you're trying to snipe and after like 100 meters it just always seems foggy or yep. like you're trying to kill sturman on woods and then like you can't see through the fog even though it's like a clear day the so fog we, we and the shadows the minimum amount of fog, it will be there 100 percent because literally if you will remove it the, the picture will be bad but uh because we are remaking the whole visuals of the game it will be a, to a totally different fog wait he said if we remove it the picture will be bad what does that mean system so most likely it will be fixed with the new visuals lighting particularly inside buildings interchange dorms resort in the bunker of reserve if you look at old interchange I, don't know what new, that means. I think most recent wipe it was actually a big improvement but it, it really i guess the best way to explain it nikita is daytime interchange looks pretty much the, exactly the same as nighttime interchange it doesn't really feel like there's too much mm -hmm. different in the darkness even though there's you know like it's so bright outside some of the maps are just particularly during the daytime it was way too dark and i, th I feel like it, a lot of these Facts. things are coming into frustration where people are like no one ever moves anymore and it's all like people just hiding in corners and uh if it was a lot brighter it would be a lot harder for people to, to hide in corners and that so i think this is where a lot of the frustration comes from and inside buildings is it feels very dark and i, I know there's like the part of the escape from tarkov that's meant to be a you know it's like a almost a horror game you know if it, it, it makes you feel scared but at the same time people want to still be able to see what they you know their enemy yeah i see, I see. That's, uh, due to limitation of the graphical engine we cannot do the like, global elimination stuff like the ray tracing and everything it's too much uh, and uh, it could be done uh, different with different techniques. So I believe we need to add another pass of the lightning in the interchange. Mm -hmm. Now for spawns and X fills, adjust some spawns on some maps on, on maps. So there's Please. no clean line of sight. Clean line of sight. Reserve has a lot of issues with yep. this. Probably one of the big ones. Reserve's got a lot of issues with you pretty much can take like two steps and you can see someone. And I thought potentially an idea just to put that forward is, you know how on streets of Tarkov, you've got some spawns like literally inside a building. So then that way you've like, it's kind of like a, a divot away. So then that way it's, you're not sure if someone's in there or not. And there's so many different things like that. I know reserve's a tricky map um, for that, but people kind of need a, it's very predictable to know where people are on the reserve when they spawn bad. in. Um, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of frustration. I, I know, uh, just to bring Jesse Kazan back up again, I know he was showing some clips recently. There's nothing more frustrating than waiting three or four minutes to get into a raid. I did that to someone earlier to move today on get, Reserve. Uh, they at least want to feel like they have a chance to fight back. Reserve has a lot of issues. Ran out of the bunker and I just shot him from dome because I spawned there. Account on some maps. Um, so then that way it's not as predictable for so many people to be at all the spawns when you spawn in. Um, but I'll, I'll put that in the universe, use that information how you want to see fit. Drastically increasing the exfil areas on some maps and increasing the amount of uh, extracts. So, for example, with this one, I'm talking about Emicon extract on interchange. Instead of it being right at that truck, having it like behind the tents and a little bit further out. So then if people are extract mm -hmm. camping, obviously, realistically, you would have to go up to the truck to extract. But the reason why people can get away with extract camping so well is because they know they have to go to a very finite section of the map. And if they've already traversed through the whole well, map. Well, it's not it's not even that. It's not that it's a small area. It's that it's the only extract. <laughs> like anyone who spawns on the other side of the map on interchange has to use Emercom unless they do a no backpack extract, which sucks because you can't take loot or they have the safe room key, which only one person or group can use. And then the car, which isn't always there. So it's like the chance of someone going to that extract at some point in that raid is like 90% unless everyone just dies. But it's mostly that it's that there's, there's not enough, there's not enough really usable or like convenient other extracts. 
as well as it being a small area. What difference area? does it really make if they're within that, say, 30 square meters compared to being like 50 square meters and they've gone over to that area and it just makes it a little bit more difficult for people to extract camp specifically. And like a, a good example is like outskirts on woods. So that extract is quite wide. Like the, you don't have to be right at that truck. There's actually a fair bit of room left and right of that you can actually extract. So, and then woods extracts that if you spawn on one side of the you map, you have, have five outskirts. extracts. If you spawn on the other side of the map, you really only have outskirts yeah. or the car extract. So potentially just opening up the idea of if there's more extracts, there's less chance of people extract camping. And this is what it's coming down to. If people don't want to die, go to all the work of going through all the map, getting all the loot, battling out other players and scavs, and then dying right on that exit line. Um, so there's either Facts. more options to extract from a map or bigger areas in the extracts that are available. It just takes away that, it takes away some of the power of someone camping an extract, reduces the chances of them being able to extract camp. Global trader limits, people hate them. They really f hate, them. hate them. Um, it's very frustrating. So you've got they two suck. hours to play for a day. You log in, something's sold out, and it's three hours to reset, and you can, can't even get it. Or if when something does reset, it sells out instantly, and they've never had a chance to do it because yep. it was only a hundred. You spend all the time doing the quests and unlocking these things, and then they're sold out unless you sit at the trader exactly when he restarts. There should not be global trader limits. If they set personal limits, fine. But if you unlock the stuff, you should be able to buy it available so my take. or something like that a quick fix would be doubling or increasing some of the stuff to buy out the amount available or i think the thing that everyone really would like is Just personal limits over global trader limits or something along the lines of that kiva and ultra medical seem to be very crappy loot now they used to be amazing people want to have the excitement of ultra medical and kiva again they would love more clothing option on ragman i'll just you you not even just kiva and ultra med in my opinion, just a lot of the key rooms on the maps now don't have good loot and people don't really care about going to them or fighting over them. Giving people to like, giving people places of like high risk, high reward, like, hey, this door has really good loot in it, but you're going to have to go here and there's probably going to be a bunch of other people and you have to kill them for it. You can do what you want with that, but... Mm -hmm. That's the plan. This was actually a really cool idea. Um, do what you want with it. Uh, potentially reworking how you get colored key cards for labs. Like you could still have it. There's a chance to get one off a boss in a pocket or whatever. But they really like the idea of um, colleagues part three, where you actually get that option to get a black key card if you want. Or you can, you know, do the other, like by killing Sanitar. And maybe having some more quests in the game where, hey, if I do this option, I could get a green key card. Or if I do this option, I might get a violet key card. And then that way it kind of gives you get the option of what path you want to go down to. It's like choose your own adventure. But you'll you'll miss out on Goose something, bumps. but you get something else instead. But they actually um, there was, there was it's someone brought that goosebumps. up. It was a, a really cool idea. Although realistically, people are only going to want yellow, black, and green key cards on labs because blue and red kind of suck now, and violet, right? I mean, they're not like bad, but the other ones are so much better. How do your in-game events come to existence? Do you have someone who plans and organizes them all, like a, a games master that goes, all right, they're going to do these events over the wipe, and it's going to tell this story, or uh, people just want to know more information on how you decide on running an event? So basically, basically it's the same thing. Like every single uh, season, we just select a, a really big like amount of different events, like a, like a big list. Then we uh, iterate them, uh, remove what's like hard to do or just stupid, and we kind of lock this in, and that's it, starting to work. Towards it is uh, like the really like big events, or like uh, the events just was just before, and uh... the events are fine, but I would like to see better rewards for completing them. Like just more yeah. reason to do them. Like the last one was a good example of that. With with the bonfires, you would do all the bonfires and spawn the boss, and he would just drop you like a bottle of vodka, and like no one's gonna go and kill all this AI and do the 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 thing in the open and light the bonfires and spawn the boss and like get killed and use all their ammo for like nothing. You know, like the, there needs to be something to get out of it. Events which are kind of repetitive every single year. That's uh, the Halloween and everything. And that's it. We kind of, because it's not like uh, we are inventing uh, those events on the go. It's more like they are established already at the start of the year even. And just it, because literally we like select them, we pick the dates and we need to actually develop them. So that's it. And when it's ready, we release it. As, yeah, when we, and we increase the amount of events towards the end of wipe because literally in the end of wipe people are uh, like in the board and need to do something. So we uh, run the like more uh, intense uh, ones. 
but game breaking yeah. ones. All right, that's all I've got. Thank you so much, Nikita, for giving me your time and uh, and everyone their time and hearing our concerns and comments and and yeah, just taking the opportunity to talk to us about this stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, good questions as always. It was yeah, it was honestly a good question list. list. Smoking is bad. I'm, I must say, smoking is bad. Okay. They are no kids. smoke. I don't drink. I don't drink alcohol. Agreed. <laughs> Nikita, good man. Agreed. <laughs> and don't play too much. Go outside. See what the hell is going on there, and instantly go back. <laughs> outside is scary. All right, guys. So that is the end. Of Outside the is scary. It was honestly, it was it was a really good list of questions. So if you do want to watch this on your own, it's on Pestilli's channel. Interview with Nikita, Escape from Tarkov. Um, he he uh, he asked a lot of good questions. I was I was happy with that. I don't know if we got a lot of answers, but at least the information got to him. He didn't answer a lot of it. it some of it felt like. Pestily was just like, hey, this sucks. This sucks too. This sucks. <laughs> People don't like this. Nikita was like, okay. But it was good. It was a good list of questions. He had a lot of, a lot of stuff that I would have as well.